Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to May's Global Health Compound Design Meeting. Uh, we are very pleased to welcome Abek Mukhopadhyay from the PDB Europe um, site, which is at Cambridge and Hingston uh, in the UK. Uh, and he's going to talk today about the Protein Data Bank and the sort of resources that are actually available on their website. Uh, and that you can use to tell you all about protein structures uh, and get a lot more out of your structures than the simple Lego model view of the proteins. Um, we also have Matthew Conroy online who is available to ask, who will be available for asking, answering questions. Uh, and there is a poll up on your screen. Um, so we'd like to know if you've used the protein structure database, either of the PDBE, which stands EE stands for Europe, or one of the other data centers uh, or not. So I'll give you a little bit of time just to click on that. So uh, we have 35% of views of the PDBE site, a further 29%, so that's what, uh, 65, 64%, have used PDB resources at some point and 35% haven't, but are hoping to learn about them today. So that's great. So uh, over to you then, Abic. Um, good. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Carolyn, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks again for giving this opportunity to present uh, this webinar here. So in this webinar, I uh, will give an overview of how to search and analyze protein ligand structures by using PDBE web services. Uh, I have divided this uh, webinar in four segments. In first few slides, uh, I will briefly describe who we are. Then in the next part, I will show some of the PDBE web services uh, with an emphasis on chemistry related services. Then I will demonstrate how to search efficiently using PDBE search interface I have tried to address a malaria related question for this purpose here. And finally, I will talk about uh, validation of protein ligand structures. So the protein data bank was established in 1971 and is the single global repository of experimentally determined 3D structures of biological macromolecules and their complexes. It contains three-dimensional structures of protein, nucleic acids with bound small molecule as ligands and also crystallization solvents. Now, the protein data bank is managed by the worldwide protein data bank, which include the RCSB in America, PDBJ in Japan, and PDBE here in UK in Europe, and BMRB in US. Now, all the WWPDB partners collaborate on data in, it means, they are jointly responsible for standardizing, bio-curating, and validating macromolecular structural data as a single global archive. Now, three WWPDB regional data centers take responsibility for depositions. So as shown in the map, RCSB handles depositions from Americas and Oceania, PDBE handles depositions from Europe and Africa, and depos depositors from Asia needs to deposit in PDBJ. Now, all the PDB partners then distribute the data from their own FTP sites with extra value-added information. For example, PDB Europe adds information about protein families by mapping to PFAM and nucleic acids to RFAM and also links small molecule to resources like Campbell and Drug Bank. Now, Protein Data Bank has seen a phenomenal growth over time. Starting at 1971, it took 11 years to have 100 entries in archive. But then by year 2000, PDB had 10,000 entries. And as of today, there are more than 140,000 entries in Protein Data Bank. PDB receives over 10,000 depositions annually. The vast majority of PDB entries come from X-ray, neutron, and combined X-ray neutron crystallography, with the remainder produced by NMR and 3D EM. PDB has experienced a significant increase in 3D EM depositions over the few years uh, because of uh, recent advancement in cryo-electron microscopy techniques. Now, in the next section, 
I will describe uh, the variety of tools and services PDB has developed over past decade to help wide variety of users find and explore the structural data. I will start this section with a screenshot of PDB homepage. I hope uh, as relevant uh, from the poll that many of you are already familiar with this website. Now, majority of the PDB web pages can be accessed by short URLs, and this can be found in the footnotes section of each slide. We have also created several YouTube tutorials for our different services and that are listed in PDB YouTube channel. I've also added those link to the tutorials in the slides where it is available and these slides will be available after the webinar. Now the top right corner in the main page is the search box, which is actually the main entry point when we want to search for something in PDB. You can search for PDB entry, name of protein, name of a drug, name of species, etc. We provide an autocomplete feature that helps to narrow down the search by providing useful matching terms as users type their query. This actually reduces the result sets to a uh, more manageable number of PDB entries. I will describe this feature again in details when I will run an example search in the next section of this webinar. Now, as a part of WWPDB release process, Every Wednesday, all new entries designated for release are made publicly available through three WWPDB FTP sites, as I mentioned before. Now, this section here provides links to the latest released PDB, EMDB entries, and also latest release chemical components. For example, this page here shows all 61 new chemical components that have been released last week. The PDB services tab in our main page uh, provides direct access to the advanced PDB tool services and resources. Now we have categorized and cluster PDB services based on our users area of interest. Each category lists the most relevant tools and services and provides a short explanation of the functionality available. For example, medicinal, medicinal chemistry tab provides all the PDB services related to the medicinal chemistry. Now I will start describing PDB services first with PDB Chem, the chemistry service of the PDB. This provides the entry point to search the small molecules in protein data bank. Now all the small molecules present in protein data bank are part of WWPDB chemical component dictionary. So I will explain this, what is in our chemical component dictionary and how we create that. Now, when we process an entry, if that has any small molecules, we create a chemical component dictionary for every small molecule when we see the small molecule first time in PDB. And we make sure that we don't create same thing twice. And we also assign a unique three-letter code for each small molecule. For example, the malaria drug Amodaquin has three letter code CQA. Now, this chemical component dictionary is an external reference dictionary maintained together with our WWPDB partners. Uh, it contains detailed chemical descriptions of all small molecule component in the PDB. And this includes standard and modified amino acids, nucleotides, uh, small molecule ligands, solvent molecules, and the term chemical components refers to the distinct chemical entity. For example, a stereoisomer of a small molecule is a chemical component. Now, each of these chemical component definition includes chemical descriptors, such as systematic name, formula, smiles, and inchi, and also has chemical properties such as stereochemical assignments and idealized and representative 3D coordinates. Now, coming back to our PDB Chem web page, let's see how can we search these chemical components using PDB Chem. Now, here on the, the red box, it shows the number of the chemical components available in the chemical component dictionary of PDB as of last week's release. 
in the left hand side it shows only those chemical components that have been released in that last week that means which have been created last week now user can search by three letter codes if they know the three letter codes or they can also search by typing the name of the molecule uh, for example if i want to search the drug amodiaquin the autocomplete features provide the list of available compounds to me there now one of the interesting feature pdb came has is to search pdb chemical component dictionary by using unique chemical fragment now for example it is possible to search pdb chemical component dictionary to find out all chemical components that contains isoquinine coming back to the main page again in the left hand side with other useful links it provides a link to download the whole chemical dictionary and various data files and images for chemical components now in this pop up page you can download the whole chemical component dictionary and other associated data files related to a specific head code now we can also retrieve all this chemistry related information from pdb by programmatically using pdb rest api service we can get entry specific information like what small molecule are present in an entry we can get information for a given chemical component like chemical descriptors molecular weight formula inchi and it is also possible to get mapping to other databases like drug bank or ccdc uh, for a chemical component along with functional mapping inter uh, functional annotation if that is available for that component now as we have seen in the last side for chemistry related information pdb rest api service has been designed to provide programmatic access to all information in the pdb database and also we use this information to create our website the rest api service has uh, separate modules that allows easy integration of all macromolecular structural information into an application or a workflow and it also provides uh, structure related information in a manageable data blocks like these snippets so this helps users uh, to find out uh, relevant information they are looking for without actually having to read or par parse large entry files now i will describe here two other useful and popular pdb services uh, that are pdb fold and pdb pizza now pdb fold provides structure based comparison and 3d alignment of protein structures it allows users to check their own structure against the whole against the whole pdb so a um, user can actually upload their own structure and find out what are the other pdb entries that are structurally similar to the uploaded structure and the fold data is also available for all pdb entries and in and and present in the specific entry page now pdb pisa is a tool to investigate formation of interfaces this also allows user to upload their own structure and check the results interactively pdb pisa predicts interfaces uh, assembly and provide information about surface area between the predicted interface so like fold pisa data is also available for majority of the pdb entries and presented in the entry specific page now i will end this section of my uh, talk by mentioning uh, shifts so this has been developed in collaboration with the uniprot team pdb also maintains shifts and this is a resource which maintains up to date mapping between structures in the pdb and sequences archived by uniprot and this allows easy transfer of annotations between the sequence and the structured data resources now in the third section i will now demonstrate the search functionality available in pdbe um, with an example pdbe actually carried out an extensive user studies and designed the search to overcome the challenges faced by user 
while searching macromolecular structures and related biological information. We have implemented autocomplete suggestions, features, and facets to help users manage huge number of result sets. And we also present quality metrics on search results to find out best structures when um, our results set have too many entries. Now I will show this, all these features with an example search. For example, I will start searching for Plasmodium in PDB. The search bar provides auto suggestion. In this case, we can see the all available organisms are shown in the organism section along with the list of molecule names and sequence family present in PDB that has Plasmodium in the name. Clicking the more button displays the list of all, precise, or all species present in organism section. Now, I'm interested only in the entries that have protein from the species Plasmodium falciparum. So I have chosen Plasmodium falciparum from the list of organism, and this has 689 entries, uh, 688 entries there. In the left-hand side here are facets. This is a facility that allows user to deal down to a single or manageable number of PDB entries based on different filtering criteria. And these are divided in five sections, uh, such as entry informations, macromolecules, function and biology, and sequence and experimental information. Now, I want to find out all the entries that have resolution between one and one and a half angstrom and has a specific EC number. And I get here three entries that has resolution between one and half angstrom and has the EC number that I am interested in. Now, in this case, I have a small set, result set, which only consists three entries, but it can be 50 entries, it can be 90 entries or 100 entries. So the obvious question now is how to assess the quality of the models and the data especially when more than one structure is available for a molecule. So PDB introduced a single empirical quality measure, a value that is used by the PDB query system, query system to sort results and identify the best structures based on this quality, quality metrics. The list shown in the red box here also provides other sorting options like sort by resolutions, uh, sort by release by release date. I have here uh, in this in this screenshot sorted the results by quality uh, in a descending order. Now this is the best entry that came up from my search in in my last slide. So I will describe now the several I will describe now the several section of entry page using this entry. The first section, this here, shows the citation for this entry. Now, if this entry is published in a journal, here, uh, so, okay, so this citation section only shows uh, a journal if this entry has been published in a journal. And the right-hand side here, it shows if this entry has been cited or mentioned in any other publication. This section here addresses the biological relevance of the structure. It includes information about the biological process like uh, function, cellular location, uh, based on the gene ontology. This section here, the structure analysis page lists all the assemblies annotated for the PDB entry. So the PDB assemblies have been analyzed by PISA and where available, a summary of information on each assembly is listed. Users also can find out all other PDB entries that are structurally related to these entries using results from PDB fold in this section. And also it lists each unique macromolecules and associated cross-reference information, such as uniprot accession, PFAM domain, interpro accession, etc. The ligand and environment section here lists all the chemical component present in this entry. This also shows functional annotation and also displays if, it, if the entry has any modified amino acids. Now for each unique bound molecule, 
this takes user to a page with general information about the molecule. And the fifth section here, which is experiments and validation, list experiment related information provided by the depositor and a summary of validation data that can help users assess the quality of the structure. This link here on the right hand side provide users all the data files associated with this entry to download. This contain PDB file, MMC file, full uh, WWPDB validation report, and several other uh, associated files. It's worth mentioning here that uh, MMC file is the official archive format of WWPDB and contain much more metadata and easy to parse programmatically. And WWPDB also has several resources available uh, for MMC file. This button here uh, under downloads provides option to visualize the structure. In PDBE, we use LightMall Viewer for visualization purpose. LightMall is an interactive web-based visualization tool, and LightMall has several useful features to visualize and analyze protein ligand structures. Uh, this YouTube link here provides a tutorial on how to use all these features in LightMall. Uh, one of the most important features of LightMall is the ability to show portions of electron density of the structures. These actually allow users to check quickly if the model fit the data by looking at the electron density fit. Our entry pages also, has, uh, also provide static images which are colored by unique molecules or annotations like PFAM domains. This actually can help users to understand complex structural data from looking at a 2D image. Now, I will only describe here the ligand and environment section in details. Now here I have chosen to show ligand environment page from a different entry where the entry has amodiaquin as a bound ligand. In this page on the left hand side, a 2D and right hand side, a 3D view of, uh, 3D view of the chemical component is available. In 2D diagram, the binding environment of ligand is shown by using leak plot program and light mole viewer on the right hand side shows ligand with electron density. These links here on the right hand side takes to another EBI chemistry resource called KB to search for similar structures and also to find other compounds that contain that this molecule as substructure. And here we find the link to Campbell and other PDB resources to find out binding site details, interaction statistics, and bioassay data. And finally, if the ligand is present in drug bank or CCDC, users can find a link here. Now at the ligand environment section, we also provide functional annotation of a ligand. At present, we only show cofactor annotation. So this is not an inherent property of a ligand and defined by other biological function specific to an entry. For example, a head code can function as a cofactor if it contains the enzyme that use this head code as cofactor and then only is annotated as cofactor. Now, the search I just performed in using our web pages and the services can be performed programmatically as well by using uh, PDBE REST API and search API services. For example, if I want to extract information from PDB for Plasmodium falciparum, I can find out how many entries for Plasmodium falciparum are present, how many entries are within a certain resolution range. Now, it is possible to find out several other information which is not possible to do through our web search. For example, I can find out distribution of molecular weight of all head codes present in those 43 entries 
that have molecular weight between 100 and 500. Uh, this notebook and many other notebooks are available in the link mentioned here that demonstrate how to use our REST API service efficiently. So in the final section of this uh, webinar, uh, I will talk about uh, validation of protein ligand structures. Now WWPDB has implemented a validation pipeline based on the recommendation of several, uh, several validation task force and a validation report for every PDB entry has been made available. I will highlight three major area of protein structure validation to look for and then I will show how to find them in PDB entry pages. Now, sometime the protein structure has some errors in model building. To find a good, to find out a good structure, um, an user should look for this while choosing a structure um, for some research or uh, any for any computational work. Now, one important step will be to look for clashes. This shows the quality of the model building. It indicates if the residues or other chains are very close to each other or wrongly built onto each other as it is shown in the image in the left hand side. And another important thing will be thing will be to look for badly built residues or ligand or chirality errors for ligand. I mean, if we are familiar with the molecule, it is sometimes possible to find an error in model building just by looking at the structure. For example, the image here in the right hand side of the slide, the tryptophan clearly doesn't look correct. Uh, the next one is the assessment of the geometry of the backbone torsion angle of protein chains, uh, which is represented by Ramachandran plots, where we can find out the residue that are outliers. Now, a residue is considered to be a Ramachandran outlier if the combination of its chi phi torsion angle is unusual. So while analyzing a structure, it is useful to check to check those residues that are listed as outliers in Ramachandran plot. And finally, to check how the model fit the experimental data uh, by looking at electron density of the residues or the protein chains or the regions of your interest. Now, in this image, electron density shown in blue indicates where the experiment data and the model agrees. And this image, where the electron density is unexplained by the model is shown in green and where the electron density is expected from the model and not present in the experimental data is shown in red. Um, it is necessary to investigate this residue carefully uh, when you are analyzing a structure if it has lots of red and green density around it. Now the question is how to get this information for an entry. Uh, there are several ways we can get this information for an entry. I will describe this one by one. Uh, and I'm not going to describe all of this. I've just picked up four different way. So when users perform a search, we provide at a glance uh, quality measure that I've shown before for each entry present in the search results. This combined quality measure was calculated by aggregating quality information regarding the model and fit of the model to the experiment delta by using experimental data from the validation pipeline. So this provides a quick way to find out a good entry when we, when we get multiple hits for our search. And in entry summary page, experiment under the experiment and validation section, uh, we show the validation slider recommended by the VTF. Now this slider here shows absolute percentile scores which reflect how well the structure scores on the corresponding criteria first compared with all PTB structures and second with the structures determined at similar resolution. Generally entry having slider in the blue region considers good and questionable and questionable if it is in the red region. Now in the slider here, the first one is the R-free. 
which is measure of how well the model predict the data. The second one here, uh, which appeared before by mistake, uh, is the clash core that indicates how a pair of atoms are close to each other. And as we have seen before, it shows if there are atoms that are bumping onto each other. The next one is the Ramachandran outlier that indicates percentage of residues in the structure with unusual uh, geometry of backbones. And also protein side chain outliers. Generally protein side chains mostly adopt certain combinations of torsion angle or angle values like their backbone conformations. Now, if the side chain torsions are not in the preferred regions, those are considered as outliers and listed here. And finally, the RSRZ outlier shows the quality of fit between a part of atomic model and the data in the real space. Now, as I mentioned before that WWPDB provides a full validation report for each entry. Uh, highlighting and also highlights all these validation problem in the validation report if there is any in the PDB entry. I will mention here a few important things to look for. Uh, the first one is the first table present in overall quality at a glance section. If there is any serious issue with a structure, this would usually be the usually be evident from this summary. This table in this section shows overall geometric quality of each chain with color coded green having no outliers to red that has more than three outliers. And the top red bar shows if a residue doesn't have experimental density or a RSRZ outlier. The next table here uh, in this section also lists the ligand that has either chirality error, which is presented as the first table in this slide, um, or clashes, or questionable electron density. And the second table we can find out uh, in the ligand section of the validation report that shows uh, which are the ligand has chirality error and which atom actually has the wrong chirality. It is also possible to find out validation information through our uh, visualization tool. So Lightmall 3D Viewer has option to show validation information indicated uh, in validation report for the whole structures and it follows the same color coding as mentioned in the validation report as well. And as I mentioned before, user also can check for density fit for each residues or ligand of their interest in ligand page or structural analysis page for an LT. Now, apart from these three procedure, all this validation information is also accessible through PDB REST API, REST API service and are demonstrated and documented in our uh, validation tab of our REST API documentation page. With this, I will end this uh, session and in the final slides for this presentation, here I have listed the URLs for our training websites and YouTube channel, where we'll find out tutorials and documentations about our services. Uh, there are several uh, tutorials available at EMBL EBI train online websites as well. And this slide and the notebook I used uh, to use the PDB REST API and search API uh, search will be available also. And if you have any queries about our service or any other things, please drop us an email through our uh, feedback section. And finally, I thank all the PDB team members, collaborators, and the funding agencies. And thank you all for your kind attention. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, I think that was really great. Uh, there's clearly an awful lot of information in available on PDB, some of which I wasn't aware of. So uh, if anybody has any questions, then uh, please do type them into the question box. Um, or uh, if I if I can, I will um, unmute you so you can so you can ask Abic yourself.
So uh, there aren't any questions at the moment, so uh, that means I get to ask some questions. So, okay. So I, um, there's, there's a feature on your website called PDB Redo. Yeah. Um, does that correct for a lot of the um, problems that you might see in a structure automatically? Yeah, so what it does is that it's a, it's an external resource and um, so they take PDB entry, all PDB release entries and ha have their own optimizations pipeline. So, but sometimes you see improvement in the in the refinement statistics or uh, fit to um, model, uh, fit, to, fit to density uh, uh, matrices. But again, it's an automated, uh, refined automated process. So not all the time, uh, I would say users need to check the data before actually to come to any conclusions from there. And right. it also so, so, it also provides the slider there uh, in in the for each entry. So you can actually see for an entry where if the the refinement done by the users is not optimal enough, it actually can reflect in the PDB redo sliders. Then you see the sliders go to the blue side instead of the red side. So things like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I have a question here from uh, Chris Swain, who hasn't got a microphone, <laughs> who says, "Are small peptide ligands or are small cyclic peptide ligands in the small molecules list?" Um. Oh, right. So, do they do they count as ligands? Are they okay. categorized as ligands okay. or are they categorized as, as proteins? Yeah. Okay. So the WWPDB policy is that if the if there are more than three peptides, uh, three res amino acid residues, then only they get into the sequence. And if there are two amino acid residues, that count as a ligand. Okay. So, but but what about a cyclic peptide? A cyclic peptide, if they are three, if they have three amino acids, more than two amino acid residues, they are in the sequence as mm -hmm. well. Okay. And okay. And also, we do one more thing, which is if the amino, uh, if they are mixture of amino acid and modified amino acids, so we'll also look for uh, standard peptide bonds. So we look for two consecutive standard peptide bonds, and if they have that one, then they get into the sequence. And if it is not there, then that come into the ligand section. Right, right. Thank you. And I, I have a question here. Uh, from Jacek, which says, when searching for similar structures, is it possible to use one known PDB ID to identify other entries representing the same protein? Ah. One main PDB IDs to... Uh, I think... It is... The, I think in my experience, if you search for a particular protein, it yeah. will bring up all the PDB IDs associated with that protein anyway as part of the search. Yes, if it shares the same molecule names, if it shares the same uniprot accessions, so that you actually get on the left-hand side to choose for when you are searching. Uh... So if I get it right, if you search for a specific PDB entry, you get one entry as a result. But also, if you search for if you if you search for one uh, molecule name or an uniprot accession, then you actually get the list of other similar or related entries as, as in the result as well. If is that does that answer the question? Let me see if I can find. Yeah, check. Uh, yes, he says. <laughs> Let me. Uh... Yeah, check. I'll just see if I have you got a, a microphone. Let me just. Uh, please. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, yeah, check. Yes. Um, I was thinking that I may find in the literature um, a, a four letter PDB code, and I would like to quickly find out uh, other structures. So I was thinking if I can use that code I found somewhere else to quickly identify um, uh, the whole set of available uh, PDBs representing the same structure. You actually yeah. mean the same protein, don't you? Yeah. And do you mean 
the related structures that also uh, mentioned in the same publication? The um, same. I, I very often find the literature which lists uh, uh, crystal structure and, and gives a uh, four letter ID yeah. uh, for, for that PDB. And yeah. I would like to quickly find out uh, other uh, entries in a PDB database which correspond to the same protein. Oh, okay. So I think for that you need to do uh, two two different uh, set of search because if you search, for example, uh, one ABC in this in a, in a search box, you get one ABC as a result. Yeah. And when you look for one ABC, then actually in one ABC entry page, um, you can go from say for example one ABC has then Uniprot P one two three four five. And uh -huh. if you then if you then get option to see all the other entries that have Uniprot P12345, if entry one ABC has say enzyme 1.1.2.3, you also get all the other entries that has that same EC number or for example same PFAN domain. But it will be two two different set of search because the first search will only return you the specific uh, entry. And mm -hmm. then you have to, you have to then go to the next search by uh, depending what you are interested in. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, and I think actually, Abik, you've just answered the next question, which is from Ashish, which says, "Can you please show me how I can search protein entries using EC codes?" E.g., yeah. one point two point starter. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can do that. Okay, uh, I think Matt, uh, Matthew has replied to him as well. Yeah. So you can do that using our search box, or you can do that uh, if you know the name of the enzyme by typing in the search box, and that will show you all the other DC numbers. And uh, so, yeah, you can actually you, you can do that easily. Okay. Uh, we have another question here from Sydney who says, is PDBE output available in suitable formats for submission in support of MAA stroke NDA uh, 3D and video? Um, so I suppose, can, can you download an, an, an animation? Uh, no, Oops. we don't. No, I don't think you can. We uh, no, we as far as I know, we don't provide any um, download options. Yeah. Are there any on the other PDB sites? Uh, no, I don't think so. So that that was actually one of my questions. Is about uh, each PDB site has different. Um, different services on it so it's different pieces of software so yeah um, but but we all provide the same uh, set of associated data files which is like pdb mmc uh, structure factor in c validation report uh, electron density map uh, like that and several other like in pdbe we provide uh, updated uh, MMC file which has a cleaner version and much more data than the WW than WWPDB MMC has. So <laughs> yes, I but think, I uh, think it was some very interesting features. So I, I didn't know about the um, light mole viewer because I tend to use the RCSB site. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same, uh, based on same concept, but uh, it it has several um, features. I have also a slide with all the light mall, uh, other light uh, other features light mall has has available. So I will make that available mm -hmm. as well. And also the YouTube Thank link you. I mentioned that that has a, a little small tutorial of three four minutes that shows all the features. Fabulous. Uh, any last questions from people? Ah, there's one from Mark, which says, uh, PDB redo again. Yeah. Please could you explain, the sliders below show the change in model quality between original PDB entry and the PDB redo entry some more. What does green mean in this context? Yeah, green mean, green mean the better. Yeah. 
yeah it's the same as uh, is the blue blue in the validation report yeah Vic, sorry um, I, I just realized i can unmute myself and ask the question um yes. so <laughs> which is better so it says model quality model, model geometry and yeah. then there's a, a box on green does that mean that um you know the that redo hasn't been needed to ha to get to good model geometry or that um redo has uh made it much better in redo's view redo in redo's view redo has made it much better i see than it was to start with uh well the data you have in pdbe is the is uh modeled and modeled by a an user and it's peer peer reviewed uh, pdb redo is an automated pipeline so i think uh, if it shows it has better data uh, the better uh, uh, refinement it can provide better refinement and better model that's definitely a start but we always suggest people to also to check for uh, uh, the the features and the geometries in the structure as well when you were, you are were using data from pdb redo sure so in order to get the pdb redo version of that structure one would then click on the pdb redo yes. link if yes. one wanted to do that okay and yes. the and the how far it is over to the green indicates how much um adjustment pdb redo has made to the original structure okay if you click on that if you click on that link on pdb redo that actually shows you the statistics in compared to the the one uh, the depositor has provided or we also recalculated so you could yes. see that the, the r factor for example changed from 37 to you know 34 the uh, you know uh, fit to density measure has been changed so they provide the the statistics there in their page what was calculated what was depositor provided and what pdb redo found okay thank you